Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. The last few weeks, even though I have not captioned it as messages related to stewardship, because I don't like giving limited context to stuff that we are addressing. But we've, we've been talking about what it is that causes God to bless us. How can God bless me? What are the limitations? And some of the things we've addressed in the last few weeks is the fact that the blessing of God is embedded in our connection to his heartbeat, his heartbeat being souls. That our giving is connected to souls, that if you give because you want to get a car or a house, that God is not a slot machine. If you want that, you can go to Las Vegas or you can go to Mac Phillips Station over here and um, you can put you know, coins in there and pull and money comet or may not come. But if you want consistency and you want to line up with what God wants, then you have to understand that the connection between increase is kingdom-mindedness in terms of being interested in what God is interested in, souls. God is gung-ho on souls. That's the reason why God gave in the first place. God gave his only begotten son for souls. True? Yeah. So if that's, if that's why God, you know, God did not give his only begotten son for any other reason but for souls. Now every other thing becomes an addition. Every other thing becomes an addition. So he says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Now we Having talked about that, we address various aspects of that particular word. We talked about souls not only in the context of preaching the gospel to people, but also in creating an atmosphere where souls can be reached without any disruption. Whether that be um, in, in giving so that the ministers of the gospel or the workers in the house of the gospel can effectively do the work of God, whether it's the pastor or the, the, the secretary or, or, or personal assistant or the chauffeur or whatever, whoever it is that's working in the household of faith, that they are focused on what God has called them to do. Now, they're not going to be able to do that effectively if we are not making it conducive for them to be able to do so. So when we give so that the, the, the staffing in the house of God focuses on what God has called them to do, we're doing the right thing. I know of ministries that actually pay people to pray. They, 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 that's, that's all they do. They pray. And they they are paid a wage for staying there to pray. Why? So that they don't focus on some other stuff. All we want you to do is just spend your time praying. There's a result from that. There's a good result from that. So souls God causes God to turn his face towards us. And then releases an empowerment that brings a result. There's the passage of scripture I want to spend time on today is Matthew 25. Some people may really get upset with this message, or you may embrace it and say, wow, I didn't know that. I better straighten up now. Or else you may say, oh, I don't know about that, but it's going to be all clear. It's going to be the word of God. Absolutely the word of God. Nothing added, nothing subtracted. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. In Matthew 25, we read about the ten virgins. But then there is another statement that the Lord Jesus Christ focuses on, starting from verse 14. He says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, his own servants, his own servants, 
and delivered unto them his goods, his goods, his own servants, his goods. Amen? And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. See that word ability there? Is the word dunamis. According to his personal, private ability. How did they get these abilities? The ability was determined by whatever it is that they had been faithfully doing. And the master was busy taking account of whatever it is that they were doing. And said, this person, I can trust him with this much. I can trust this with this. I can trust this with this. I can trust with that. And he gave to them talents. To one he gave five, to another two, and to another one he gave one. Now a talent... In the day of the Lord Jesus Christ was worth a year's wage. One year. So whoever it is that he gave that talent to had in one block a year's wage. Let's give that year's wage a figure. Let's say to the one who had that amount of talent, he gave $50,000. That would be very conservative because a talent in weight was about 7.5 pounds. Now, convert that to today's figures of how much gold is, one troy ounce is, and you know we're talking big money here. 50,000 is not even comparable. But let's assume that's 50000 So he gave to one $50,000. And to another, he gave two, meaning 10000 And to another, he gave five, meaning what? 25. Five times five. Yes? Okay. 200, oh, no, no. 250, sorry. 250,000. So, he goes on his journey. And he comes back. And the guy who had the 250,000 had doubled what he was given. He comes back and says, uh, this is what you gave to me. I worked with it. I traded with it. I related with people, I did business with it, and I doubled it. Here it is. Half a million. Hmm. Good, man. That's good, that's good, that's good. Well done, he says. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, let me not just, let me not just say that. Let me read it to you. Amen? Because many times, we say, I say it, I know you say it, and we say, I say, um, when I stand before the Lord, all I want him to say is, well, as soon as I hear well, I know I'm okay, well done, I know I'm going in. But when did the Lord use that statement, well done? And to what context did he use it? Well, to this context. He used it here. The Lord says in verse 21, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and what? Faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enter into the what? The joy of thy Lord. Wait a minute. When the, what did the Lord say about souls again when, when a soul gets saved? What, what, does he, what does he say about what happens in heaven? There's great rejoicing. There's great joy. So when he's talking about talents here, he's not re- this is towards the end of his ministry here. He's not just talking about 
money exchange. He's talking about the exchange for souls. I have gifted you, and you are coming back, and you are giving me back results. You're bringing back results. Come and in, my friend. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. This is what, this is what gets this place jumping. Uh, come, come rest, come rest. You've done a great job. Wow. So the guy with two comes, and he says, I doubled my two. Here it is. My two has become 200,000. Now, for those of you just catching up, we made an equivalent of a talent to 50,000. That's just to make it easy for us mathematically. It's way more than that. Well, he also received two talents, came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. And the Lord says unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strewed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. No more, no less. I didn't steal your stuff. I'm returning back to you exactly what you gave to me. You know who this is? Let me tell you who it is. This is the person who got saved. And wants to go to heaven all by himself. Did not share the gospel with one soul. Didn't care about anybody. He said, Pastor, you, you're stretching this. No, no, no. Um, I'm not stretching anything here. I'm giving you an example of what this means. Now, I'm going to show to you in a moment that everything he's been talking about here is about money. But an example of somebody who comes and says, you, I know that you, 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 you're such a, 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 a tight-handed man, blah, blah, blah. Can you imagine saying, and I was afraid? You open your mouth and you're talking to your boss. You're a terrible man. You try to reap where you didn't sow. Blah, 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 blah. And I was afraid. Really? Really? You were afraid. And so you were able to say to your master, I knew thee. I know you. That thou art a hard man. I know you're a hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown. And gathering where thou hast not strewed. And I was afraid and went and hid the talent. And the Lord, verse 20 says, And the Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful, lazy servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strewed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my what? So the talent was money. And God was saying, I'm going to deal with you based on how you handle my money. How you handle my money. Are you investing it in souls or hiding it? Are you investing in lives or hiding it, burying it? Because you are operating in a spirit of offense. Well, I'm struggling. I'm not going to tell anybody about Jesus. Whatever your reason is, God says, if you want to hear that statement, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you better not be hiding his money. You better not be hiding his word. Those two go together. Those two go together. Because 
whatever it is that we're doing, we must have the bottom line, baseline that says money, investment for souls. Our goal as God's people is not things, it's not stuff. That is what God adds to us. That is what God adds to you and me, to make life easy. God increases you just to bless you, to smile on you and say, love what you're doing. I saw what you did today. I saw it. That's good. Why? You gave for souls. You gave for souls. For souls, including yours. Including yours. You're given to change lives. You're given so that the focus of the kingdom will be right on. Do you know that if we had the resources, we can change our world, that it's money, money, that the devil is hoarding and keeping in his territory that belongs to you, that belongs to me, that causes the world to be able to control whatever it is they want to control. If if, if, If the world today wants to get rid of all Christian television, all they need to do, is to hike up the price so high we cannot pay. And say, well, <laughs> we're, not, we're not discriminating, it's just the cost. If you can pay, yeah, can pay, sorry. We can be shot out of a lot of things right now by somebody just, just hiking up the price. Because we don't have it. And why don't we have it? Why is it that we don't have it? That's a question I must ask myself, that you must ask yourself, because God says, I will bless the work of your hands. So what is it that I'm doing that's causing God not to bless the works of my hands? And God says, I tell you what, you've been sowing a lot, but reaping nothing, because you are living your life for yourself, Malachi. You've sown, and when you, when you went to harvest, it was less than what you expected, and when you put whatever it is that you got into your pocket, it was like you were putting it into a pocket of, full of holes. While you were walking, it was dropping. Why? Because you're concerned about yourself. You're concerned about your chandeliers. You're concerned about everything else. And you forgot about my house, my people. We need to change strategies. And understand that God, when we honor God with our giving, that we are saying, God, this is for souls. I want souls to be added to your church daily. I know a church in Africa, um, very big ministry in the worldwide. These people, they have all kinds of businesses, they have all kinds of stuff, but the primary purpose of whatever it is they have is to make sure that the needs of the people are being met. They know how to fast, and they can fast big time. They pray, and they pray big time. But when it's time to eat, they can eat big time. Everybody eats. Every service they could go to, there's cooking. Somebody is busy cooking. When you finish service, you are going to some restaurant or whatever, and you pay you know, pennies, and some people just eat for free, whatever. What is the secret of this ministry? All I can wrap it all around is the interest for souls, souls, 
souls, souls. Whether it's the praying, whether it's in the giving, whatever it is that you're doing, souls, 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 souls. That must be the story of this ministry. That must be our story. All we are interested in is how we can touch lives. With whatever it is God has given to you, whether it's a resource, a talent, money, gifting of any kind, bring it to the table and see how you can use whatever it is God has given to you to impart lives. You know how to do the arts, you know how to do drama, whatever it is, you know how to sing, you know how to write scripts for movies. Hey, think souls. Why are all our best out there in Hollywood being corrupted when they can do the same thing in the kingdom of God and pull souls into the kingdom? Because we cannot pay them. And so they have been corrupted and they are out. But may God touch our lives so powerfully that whatever it is you are, whether you're a doctor, an engineer, whatever it is that you are, that you think souls, that you invest in souls. You're a doctor. You can do eye surgery. Well, when you think in souls, you're finding a way to give back. You don't have to charge for everything. You're a mechanic. You know how to fix cars. Set up a day, a ministry day. Anybody that needs to, their cars fixed, we're going to be here. What, we're going to diagnose what your problem is. And if we can fix it, we'll fix it. And if we cannot fix it here, we'll take you to our shop and we'll fix it there. We're going to do it for the first 10 people that come. What is wrong with that? It's about souls. Giving back, touching lives, causing change to, to take place in the lives of men and women because we have one, one primary thought ringing through our minds day in, day out. How can I touch lives and cause Jesus Christ to be revealed in the lives of men and women with whatever it is God has given to me, with my money, with my talents, with the giftings I have, whatever it is, I am not going to bury it I'm going to make certain that somebody knows that there is a good God. Amen? I'm a psychologist. Well, help somebody. Help somebody. Whatever your gift is, it is soul worthy. Amen? It's not just the money that you put in here. It is the fact that you want to get the word of God, the seed of God, into the lives of men and women that causes lives to begin to pull because we shine as bright lights. They're in darkness and the sea. Hmm. I'll go there. How many people, you know what? This is something. We have a lot of soup kitchens and stuff like that. You can, this, this is the fine line. You can have a soup kitchen, you can have whatever it is that you do, and just do it so that somebody is not hungry and not think as your primary purpose, I want people in the kingdom of God. When they eat from this food today, God, you will also deal with the spiritual issues and needs in their lives. You will break the stronghold of poverty off of their lives so that they don't have to come here, but rather, having been impacted, their life changes, and they know that the change started because they heard something. They experienced love. They, they whatever. But, but God, their lives must be changed. Lives must be changed. We don't have to be poor and stay poor. The gospel is to change the power and the stronghold of poverty. Why did poverty come into the world? Sin. So, if my sin issue has been dealt with, 
my poverty issue must be dealt with. We must, we must cover all of the bases. Spirit, soul, and body. There should not be anybody in the house of God struggling. If we're doing it right, if we're doing it right, if we are all sold out at doing it, so that there may be meat in my house. Is that what he said? That's what God wants to do. So that there's meat in my house. So that it's enough. Nobody should be able to come to the house of God and say, I have a need. And we say, we cannot help you. But that's where we are today. We cannot help you. And God says, no, that's not the right answer. Jesus said, we're not going to send them anywhere else. Sit down. Sit down. He took his five loaves and two fishes, and he blessed it, gave it to his disciples, who had placed everybody in order, and he served everybody, and they came out with more than they started with. That's what we should be experiencing. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works shall you do, because I go to be with the Father. He's our intercessor. He's interceding for us. Amen? And he wants to dispatch resources into our hands. The master went on a long journey, and he gave talents. Shall we qualify ourselves to be the people that God will give into, pour into, so that we can impart lives? I pray that we do so. Amen? Hallelujah. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Call to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.